If the connector is being built for a resource that requires the OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow, this can be accomplished by selecting the OAuth 2.0 auth type on the authentication screen. When OAuth 2.0 is selected, we're presented with the following fields. Base URL, which is the resource's OAuth URL. The authorization path, which is the relative path to authenticate and authorize the connection. Typically, this would be something like slash authorize. The token path, which is the relative path to retrieve the access token once the connection has been established. Typically, this would be something like slash token. The refresh token path, which is optionally used to refresh the token when it is expired. And this is typically the same as the token path. In the credentials section, we're provided the redirect URI, which will need to be copied over to your resources OAuth configuration. Note that this will be different between connectors in Okta Preview and Okta Production orgs. Beneath that, we have the client ownership. This has two options, developer, which allows the connector developer to hard code the client ID and secret values into the connector, and customer, which will add the client ID and client secret fields to the connection form. These will need to be provided when establishing any new connection for this connector. With the customer selected, we can see fields have been added to the connection form in the preview on the right. Next, we have scopes. Here where we can add any OAuth scopes the connector needs to request. The parameters section allows for any additional information required to establish a connection. Since we have customer selected in the client ownership section, we can see two parameters have been added automatically, client ID and client secret. The config values section allows you to provide additional information to the connector that might be required when establishing a connection in a workflow. Now let's take a look at the HTTP helper flow for an OAuth connector to see how this information is used. Since the connector has all the information required to establish the connection, we can see our connection object already contains the access token. So all we need to do is build out the authorization header using the access token, then pass that into the HTTP raw request card along with any other information required to call the resource like the API URL, the request type, etc. We'll take a deeper dive into this in another video.